Okay, no go panda kohoa mani ni vai mask. Ni vai hi. It's not funny, it's not, but because it is not funny and it's serious, that is why we're going to talk about it. So today on Health Monday, we're going to discuss COVID-19, methods of prevention, possibly how to care for someone who has contracted the virus, okay? So my name is Valentine, or at Color Me Val. And please, if you hear me joking, please let's just laugh. Uh, to to serious all the time, all the time. At, at White 54 Facebook, at White 54 channel on Twitter and YouTube as well. Hashtag of a day is what in the morning. Now what we're going to do is going to go straight into it. I have a very, very dapper guest. His name is Mike, but I think he'll introduce himself better. Hi, Mike. How are you, Valerie? Fine, thank you. Would you like to address the nation? Oh, great. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael Gitao, uh, Emergency Services and Safety con uh, Consultant, and I run a certain firm called Ethnomed Healthcare Inc. Uh, what it does, we have uh, different departments, and uh, one of the segments of that, some of the core job that we do is integrated medicine and research. Uh, apart from that, we have a safety department that runs with different uh, aspect of uh, the trainings, the knowledge, and also public uh, awareness. And one of the things that we do is, like for example, now creating awareness in respect to COVID-19, which has become a big problem to the whole world. Yes. Where did this, this COVID-19 come from? Well, uh, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. I could start off from what it's all about. So then what go to is it? Us. Where has it come from? And why is it in Africa? Let's start from what it is. Okay. Now, um, coronaviruses, um, it's, it's a group now, you say it's a coronavirus. It's, it is the pathogens causing uh, illness or diseases. Mm -hmm. So, and someone had talked about what are pathogens and you have bacteria, viruses, or microorganisms that could cause now um, an illness to human. Mm -hmm. And this was particularly the um, coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19, mm -hmm. which was now uh, renamed as, was initially as novel cor coronavirus. Mm -hmm. I uh, was discovered in uh, Wuhan city. Mm -hmm. uh, this is known of the Mibei uh, province mm -hmm. in China. And this is when the healthcare practitioners started noticing some of the signs and symptoms uh, from different patients presenting with a pneumonia like mm -hmm. uh, signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. which was pretty early, uh, late, late part of the 2019. Mm -hmm. Then from there on, um, we had this now influx of patients. Because it is a new trend, it's a new new trend of the virus. It's not something that has been running, that mm -hmm. has been known of. So now, from there on, now it come now started spreading quite fast. Mm -hmm. From now, the China, then then ran across the whole of Europe, US. Now we ended up having it in Africa, mm -hmm. and specifically now we have it in Kenya. To listen, my videos are China ni fake. So to quote, my check COVID nineteen be any fake. Okay. I don't think we are laughing about it anymore. In fact, we are <coughs> we are so scared. We are at home now. We are, we are mm. afraid of moving around. We are afraid of talking to people. We are afraid of opening the door, touching surfaces. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But just in the beginning, okay, just tell me the truth. because I I am aware that COVID, not nineteen, but Corona itself, like you said, is is many. It's a group of them. Yeah. and understand that it was previously only in animals mm -hmm. before it made the jump. I don't know mm -hmm. what kind of jump that mm -hmm. is to humans. Mm -hmm. So is it someone's fault somewhere like Kutumbaya and then suddenly here we are all suffering? Is that what happened? I would be in a position to confirm that yet. <laughs> However, the <laughs> coronavirus is, is, is it's a big it's a group of viruses which affect both animals and human. Mm -hmm. And now the transition, that is what now it is being actually even worked on. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, this, this is something that is uh, uh, quite new, mm -hmm. even to the healthcare practitioners, to the researchers, to virologists. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're getting back to the lab and trying to figure out what um, can we really do. Because other, as we speak right now, mm -hmm. we do not have a cure for it. We do not have uh, a vaccine for it. Mm -hmm. and, and now what we, it's, it's you know, starting from a scratch, going all the way through. Yes, now from where it started, and it is a global issue now. It is, it's not one country's issue. It is a common misconception. And today also we're going to be talking about this. The things you think you know about corona versus the truth about mm -hmm. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It's not airborne, is it? 
But people will assume that if someone coughs a meter or two meters away, then I must run for my dear life. Okay. Please explain that or demystify that. Uh, well, earlier on, as like I said, when the initial phases of it, we there was no much of a trending or the initiative saying that it's part of the airborne. Mm -hmm. However, uh, there is a, a recent um, uh, update that mm -hmm. came from the World Health Organization that, and actually, that that those droplets, it's actually the virus can stay in the air for even up to about even eight hours. So the research is still You're being carried out. Yes, a bit of panic, I am. I am not. <laughs> I am not making you panic. I'm just giving you the realistic part of it, uh -huh. and that's why you'd find, like for example, the cases of healthcare uh, providers, mm -hmm. then they ought to. They recommended to put on masks, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with that kind of a patient, mm -hmm. because you could never know. Um, maybe it is still hanging there. However, it depends with the environment. Mm -hmm. Could be the case of humidity. So uh, that is something that is, uh, and, and I'll be waiting from the maybe the guys who are doing the research, um, and again the World Health Organizations. Uh, locally again because even the, the um, some of the researchers locally they're working together with the World Health Organization. We are about to get now is it a confirmation or is it going to start you know so that we can have a this case demystified is it really what is happening uh, can it uh, is it an airborne mm -hmm. or is it just how it has been transmitted all through i think the scariest thing is not actually knowing what's going on yes so the thought of something that can stay in the air for yeah. eight hours mm -hmm. is also a little bit freaking me out mm -hmm. but again silver lining mm -hmm. i understand it's not a death sentence it's, it's you you don't have to die once you have because I've mm -hmm. seen a couple of cases where someone has COVID-19 and they mm -hmm. make full recovery mm -hmm. but what well if you look at the case of the coronavirus it is not something uh, this is a new virus trend that is new however mm -hmm. the case of coronavirus has been there and if we start you back all the way even uh, 1918 we had the one which was the the one that flushed so many people mm -hmm. which is a Spain flu mm -hmm. that flushed many people and that's where we end up even having now the SARS, the severe acu uh, acute respiratory syndrome. We also had another one called mass Middle East respiratory syndrome. Those ones if you look at that time and mm -hmm. now it's slightly different. Mm -hmm. Now the difference comes in previously those initial viruses. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the, the rate of infectivity vis-a-vis the mortality mm -hmm the time previously the mortality was quite high mm -hmm. but now in this trend with the coronavirus uh, the covid 19 mm -hmm. the infectivity yes, is quite fast and high however the of mortality is not as much because if you compare the two you'd find the previous we could have about a mortality of about 10 percent mm -hmm. the 10 percent of the people who are already infected then the mortality will be about that mm -hmm. but in this case with the data collected uh, all across uh, so far mm -hmm. the the mortality uh, rate is about between two to three percent yes oh, i want to say that's you know encouraging but it's still a, a number <laughs> it's still people you know not yes being i know here. i know okay mm -hmm. let's work um our way through this so yeah. prevention yeah and then maybe after prevention what happens if you have it mm -hmm. how how to mm -hmm. conduct yourself how would others supposed to be conducting with the person who has okay. the virus and me and then now the post part, the yeah. one we were talking about before, yeah. okay. the lights went on. And if you have questions, please don't be afraid to ask, okay? At White Five on Facebook, White Five on Channel on Twitter, hashtag is Why in the Morning. So we are having hourly updates on White Five Four. Shout out White Five Four Channel. And we are getting people to wash their hands with soap and water, and we're teaching them how to do it in between, um, under the fingernails, and all this. And we're telling them, Hand sanitizer is good, alcohol-based hand sanitizer, but it's not the end of the world if you cannot access it. Mm -hmm. Other things we've been telling them is social distancing, keep at least a meter away or something. But mm -hmm. also these things are not making a lot of sense because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. and the driver has mm -hmm. not complied with social distancing. What are you going to do? And you got to get to work. Okay. So maybe we could talk about that. Yeah, let's start with those ones. Now, uh, maybe I'll start off, how do you tell that um, someone is already infected? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you, we're starting from the point of no 
So now, if we know, then we know what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, we have those two cases where you find asymptomatic and symptomatic. Asymptomatic is you could be infected, but I can't tell mm -hmm. because it is not, you know, printed on your forehead. Unfortunately. Yes. Now, but there are those signs and symptoms which we call the cardinal um, signs and symptoms. That means you're likely now again to be infected. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure most of us, uh, they could be aware that we're talking about cases of the sore throat is common mm -hmm. because remember this this infection is affecting the respiratory system mm -hmm. the respiratory is a breathing system that's where majorly it is affecting and now when you have that an infection so the first phase is because it's behaving like an influenza or flu mm -hmm. and it's a common science to more but uh, um, you find that most of us we behave we pretend or exu exudate the sign and symptoms more or less the same mm -hmm. however in stages so in case of the sore throat uh, you could have a persistent sore throat that is not going away mm -hmm. then there is a headache that is accompanied there um, then the headache is not going away as well mm -hmm. uh, it is persistent you're finding a fatigue which is maybe general malaise mm -hmm. through their body then the case again where there is a fever and the fever this uh, now you if you use a thermometer to check you find it is something now above uh 37.5 because normally you'd find that the body n normal temperatures between maybe 36.5 mm -hmm. to 37.5 mm -hmm. so anything above that that is what's now considered a high uh, fever now and those will be now the same of the signs that you could uh, now be having and then there is a point where so if someone gets you have seen those signs there's already finding happening in the public areas or in different sectors that you find they're taking temperatures mm -hmm. then the moment they get that uh, when someone take it and show you and it is elevated you tell you right please step, step aside then they are able now to ask you a few questions have you interacted with someone perhaps mm -hmm. you know uh, suspected to have been infected have you or yes have you traveled because mm -hmm. now those are now the key you're trying to nail it down could you be likely be infected then once it is you're suspected to be because out unless you outside is not very very easier to know that this person is already infected because you have to go and get it now tested mm -hmm. that's why now you need now to get uh, in touch with the health uh, facility um, and the health facility, the transition here we're looking at, so if you're the one who have uh, suspected that, the right thing is not to tell that suspected victim of the case to go to the hospital. Because perhaps, like you say, they're not perhaps driving, uh, they're using the public means. Mm -hmm. So if you jump in a matatu, uh, this matatu full of other occupants, you're going to be touching things, you do not have perhaps the hand sanitizer, you don't have masks, so you're going to leave uh, you know, you're going to be touching all over. Then as you get to the medical facility, remember you are not already known that you're coming. Mm -hmm. And there are other patients still in the hospital. The healthcare providers are attending to other patients and hey. here you come in. Uh -huh. All right? So with that transition, that's why when you get to be that you have been suspected, even are on the ground, mm -hmm. it is right, that's why the government provided a number that you can call. Mm -hmm. That is a 719. Mm -hmm. And when you call that, uh, first of all, to get to get more information on what is going on, the current uh, situation, mm -hmm. the, the signs and symptoms, what can you do is you dial star 719 hash. Mm -hmm. That will give you all the prompts because there are two, it's in different languages, that is in English or in Swahili, you can choose whichever. Then from there, once you now can tell this is like you now to be the coronavirus, now you call 719, mm -hmm. which is toll free. And this is managed by the Ministry of Health. They're going to send you uh, the right ambulance or the right expertise to come and evacuate you the right way from here to the designated medical facility. So that now the case of now are contaminating others or spreading this now it is being curbed. Because the biggest issue we are having is mm -hmm. like, uh, even the panic uh, perhaps you had the other day is some people fill you in a whole plane. Mm -hmm. uh, you only suspect um, or it confirmed than where the rest of the occupants who are in the same aircraft. Mm -hmm. So they are out there perhaps. So it's becoming a big problem for the government as well to try to track it down. And remember, we, the resources are not as much as adequate as that. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, the transition we are looking into. So, and again, is it every time that you start coughing or sneezing that you have to rush to the hospital? 
I'm sure most of the Kenyans, um, every time they sneeze or cough, they don't but, uh, rush to the hospital. Now it's serious. Now you can't just cough in front uh -huh. of anyone anyhow. Because mm -hmm. now the issue of panic comes yeah. in. Yeah. And why would you panic is perhaps because at some point we are not following simple instructions. Mm -hmm. Because at these signs and symptoms, they don't always... You realize if you just cough once, that does not mean you're... You have, you're infected with coronavirus. We said a few examples. Have you been interacting with people? Have you had an, an encounter with someone who has traveled? Y have you been to places where now you find it is crowded? And mm -hmm. that's where this, the case of distancing is another, um, it's bring, brought uh, forth. Mm -hmm. And when distancing, the, the easiest because if I sneeze now mm -hmm. or I cough, Likelihood is I will have some droplets, which is one of the modes of transmissions, but they cannot jump up to 1.5 meters, right? Mm -hmm. One and a half meters. They really, unless you're spitting like a <laughs> snake, which is not very easy. Mm -hmm. And that's for the case of, uh, you know, spacing. Mm -hmm. So now, once you have all that into play, then that's when the person goes to the hospital. However, what are the preventative measures that we ought to have? Mm -hmm. There's the issue of um, hygiene, mm -hmm. very basic very very basic so one you're starting off with the uh, uh, water just clean water mm -hmm. no more clean water with soap what kind oh. of soap what about the, the people that we're looking at who I once went to Kibera to do a feature yeah. and just okay Malin Ligua, it was for clout. I was trying to stand up somewhere so that, you know, they can get a proper shot of the sky and the view. Mm -hmm. But what was actually below me, what was going on, qua ground between different, mm -hmm. you have houses this this close together, na maji tu ya and that maji is dependent on, I think, just the rain. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's water flowing, but there's going to be a lot more water flowing. And it's not necessarily the cleanest of water, mm -hmm. but it's available water. Mm -hmm. So, nikichota utanilamu, alafu nianze kunao. Uh, well, I'll just say that it's, well, perhaps common sense, although some points they are not very common, mm -hmm. is it's just clean water that you can tell where the source is. Mm -hmm. And a clean water you can tell by even by look. Mm -hmm. You can tell these. Because if it's not clean, perhaps you're going to see coloration, What if I don't smell. have access to clean water? Um, with what we have currently in Kenya, mm -hmm. it, it's most most of the the biggest percentage we have access to uh, clean water either mm -hmm. that is piped by the, the the council or the government from the uh, or alternatively you have boreholes mm -hmm. and there are those perhaps who you know have big reservoirs so in kenya we wouldn't say that we are inadequate of water as per se mm -hmm. as, as compared to other countries mm -hmm. so clean water would be there then if this water you necessarily want now to make it maybe more sterile, that's where you can boil it mm -hmm. all right um, then you use the soap. What soap? There's no more soap mm -hmm. that you have. Then have to be scented, CG red, to remove no, the no, jam. You know, bottom line, if, oh. if, even if you go back to, I don't know whether that's what's happening, most guys who were doing it in chemistry and back in high school, making soap was very easy. You just mm -hmm. go in a lab and, you know, make a few compositions there and you have your soap. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. So it is a basic, there is those basic um, uh, substitute must be there. Uh, facts that you know this is going to be soap. Mm -hmm. And once you wash your hands, then again, the bacteria, uh, the, the virus will not survive there. However, there is a point of how do you wash your hands? Mm -hmm. Because there is a process. Mm -hmm. Most of us, um, you know right now, there is, <laughs> this big, yes, there is this big <laughs> issue with Kenya's now that we have to keep on sanitizing, cleaning our hands. Because uh, previously, most of mm -hmm. the larger population, they have never been cleaning mm -hmm. their hands. So it's look a foreign thing. <laughs> but in healthcare, it's a, it's a practice every day. It's a practice every day. Uh -huh. So basically, this is when you get water, you wet your hands. So once you wet your hands, then you get your soap, apply it. Mm -hmm. This is application on the front, which is the pump. Then you, at the back, you clean, you rub completely at the back. Then you rub the other hand mm -hmm. of the uh, the back again. Then you have between the fingers because again between the fingers you could be, be having again um, substances there or microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the thumb as you keeping in thumb. Remember there is a space between the index finger and the thumb here. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So as you clean, as you cleaning that, you mm -hmm. remembering this space and the other side the mm -hmm. same. All right. Then you remaining with. The, the fingertips, the fingertips the of the nails, so that's why they need to be cleaned again. Oh they are cleaned again. Remember, you only clean here. So some point, because perhaps you have been exposed, then you go to the wrist. 
you see. Are we scrubbing in for surgery or are we washing mm -hmm. our hands? You wash. <laughs> this is a sanit. This is what the cleaning is. Well, and it it is. should not take even take you more than sixty seconds. Uh huh. It shouldn't because it's fast, quite fast. Mm -hmm. At the back, at the back. In between, uh -huh. mm -hmm. in between, then thumbs, thumbs, wrist, wrist, rinse. Pretty Finish. easy. Okay. Yes, that is pretty easy. Uh -huh. The same thing is happening even to sanitizers. Mm -hmm. Get sanitizer. <laughs> you okay? So <laughs> yes, and, and, and it has a short, you know, that uh -huh. is quite um, a shortcut. Uh -huh. But if you have any contaminant over here, uh -huh. and someone touches you, or not, not necessarily even someone touching you, because now self distant uh, spacing. But what about you go and touch a table? Mm -hmm. Because if you have that virus, it, you're going to leave it there. Mm -hmm. It will stay on the surface. Mm -hmm. It can even go up to six days. So mm -hmm. any other person touching there, the table, the doorknobs, mm -hmm. okay, uh, or even the sinks, mm -hmm. remember they're going to come in, get the same. Mm -hmm. So this is why it is important for you to clean or to sanitize before. Mm -hmm. For those, again, you're being encouraged to put on masks. Mm -hmm. Now, the mask... <laughs> there is a concept again for many people are panicking out there and they are putting all sort of different types of masks. Okay, wait, before we get to the mask, yes. would you please teach us how to sanitize our hands and then we'll ask you a couple of questions on, okay. on a couple of minutes and then okay. we'll get back to the mask. So, hand sanitizer, do yes, we please. use this one? Let's use a small one. We can yes. use a small one. Cute. Now, I'm going to use a supermarket. All right, I cannot can put a bit on yeah. your hand. Guys, it's him after you don't have to uh -huh. put a lot. Like that. Lot and I put mine like that. Uh -huh. So we go together, yeah? Okay. So? Uh-huh. This is enough, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? I like the cooling effect. Okay. Is it not? Is it not going? Yeah, okay. Is it not going? Okay. This is something, by the way, guys, it's, it's yeah. very you see? easy to forget. Okay. Then Where? by the time you're done, you're actually becoming dry. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, when you do this, mm -hmm. then you know that you can feel all around mm -hmm. that you have done something. Mm -hmm. That will not now, when you move from here to the other spot, you're mm -hmm. not going to go, you have done this, you have already sanitized, then a few meters, then mm -hmm. you do the same. Mm -hmm. It's going to be logic because that is a waste. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so guys, I have a couple of questions coming yeah. up. And we have a couple of questions over here. Okay. We start over here at White Five Four Facebook at White Five Four Channel Twitter hashtag is Five the Morning. So a myth, one of the myths, uh, and a myth is something that you believe that is not true. Okay, so the myth is coronavirus lives in the throat, throat, throat area. So drink lots of water, lots, so that the virus is pushed into the stomach where the acid will kill it. This science sounds fantastic, but it's a myth. Why is it a myth? <laughs> Good. Now, if you look at the throat, there is a throat and there is uh, keywords. Throat there and mm -hmm. there is stomach. Mm -hmm. Those are two systems, body systems, because the throat is part of the respiratory system, mm -hmm. which is a breathing side. The stomach is now where you talk about gastrointestinal. It is a food yeah, but path. Oh, so far, gas, man, and has pipe. Well, there are two, because mm -hmm. if, you touch, if you touch your neck around here, mm -hmm. the first tube you feel, that is your throat mm -hmm. or the trachea. Right behind it, that's where you have the food pipe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then uh, back at the, pa, at the, at the pa, back of your mouth, mm -hmm. there is uh, a flip like called Corona, which, uh, no, uh, Karina, sorry, mm -hmm. that flip opens between uh, the esophagus and the trachea. So that means you cannot drink, you cannot swallow and, and breathe at the same time. So that's why maybe I'm trying to and I make a joke, I love why I swallow or drink some water and goes the, the <coughs> that's why. Exactly. So okay. if you try to get any, any water, or, all right, let me put it easier. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes down through your trachea apart from air, you will choke. Mm -hmm. You will choke. So if you have, the virus is already affecting the throat. If you drink water, does it flush it to go down now to your abdomen? Exactly, it's a myth. Mm -hmm. Those are two different independent organs. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to go down that. However, if you happen to be now uh, within the esophagus, the virus, and it goes down to the abdomen, it's not going to survive. You have gastric juices. They're mm -hmm. going to kill that virus. Mm -hmm. It will not survive. Mm -hmm. So these, again, uh, drinking a lot of water is going to help you rehydrate. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it's not the one now pushing down the virus. <laughs> Those are different case scenarios. Uh -huh. yes. So in other news, guys, any rumors? 
This is rumors. <laughs> you cannot drink water to flush down the thing. It's not logical. Yes. It's not logical. Hashtag is on the morning. Okay. So another myth. Hand sanitizers are better than soap and water. Another myth. Hand sanitizers are better than soap and water. Now, again, because of these hourly updates, I have come to learn that soap, and please, uh, how to say, uh, edit me, Co edit me, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, yes. Yeah. <laughs> soap and water actually is better than hand, hand, san, hand sanitizer, sorry, mm -hmm. because it kills all the tutma germs in, mm -hmm. in the nini. Is mm -hmm. that true? Well, for the hand, uh, hand sanitizer to kill, because the water is a composition that kills the viruses or the microorganisms, is usually the alcohol bit part of it. That's why the minimum alcohol, um, alcohol percentage should be not less than 60. From the World Health Organization's uh, the standards, mm -hmm. uh, what is acceptable is from 60 and above. So any percentage that is less than that mm -hmm. is not, not likely now to be effective on microorganisms. Mm -hmm. Now, why soap is um, easier to use? Because soap has lipids on its mm -hmm. surface, right, in the composition. This virus itself it has a lipid membrane in it. So when you combine the two, the soap usually does, it breaks this and it gets in and bust out the virus. That's wow. how easy soap is. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so please. So they're both panic. effective, but mm -hmm. it depends on which one do you access first. Mm -hmm. Then again, that's why we ha you have to look at the recommendations. Yes, the minimum uh, of the alcohol uh, percentage. If it is lower, it's not going to be very effective. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that can help me to try to demystify. Some people are saying you can go and use uh, beer. Or, uh, yeah, because Kenyans are just Kenyans. Because the next thing is that we to now on a Glen Vidic. So is that as effective as The whisk is and like, well, uh, that's not so good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I would wish you'd want that perhaps to be going down your, <laughs> your ad, you know, all the way to your ad, abdomen uh -huh. to enjoy. <laughs> But now if you put it in your hands, that's pretty much of waste. Because mm -hmm. remember what we talked about, the configurations, mm -hmm. yeah? Then the effectivity of it, yes. So uh, the best, nip for what I'd recommend, and this is ex uh, can be accessed by any other Kenyan, mm -hmm. is water and soap. Because like right now we're having a problem with the hand sanitizers. They've run out of down. market or? Yeah, not out of market. It's the demand is quite high than the supplier. So that is why. No, I have so many things there about that, but I won't say anything. Yes. What I'm going to do is that is take you to the next bit. Okay. If you can be able to hold your breath for 10 seconds without discomfort, you don't have COVID-19. And I came across this myth the first, first days, bef just before they announced that we had cases of mm -hmm. COVID-19 in the country. Mm -hmm. How is this wrong? Why is it wrong? Uh, the rationale behind this is because one of the symptoms, again, is a difficulty in breathing. I know this name. Uh, d dis dysponia or something? Dysnea. Th that one. That yes. one. So it's a difficulty in yes, breathing. Yes, difficulty in breathing. So in, in essence, I should not be able to count to 10. Uh, well, the reason is because right now, if you hold your breath, you can go up to 10 mm. comfortably and easier. But whenever now you're having um, a respiratory uh, disease, because usually it goes and breaks down because it has caused a lot of problems all the way to the alveoli. Alveoli is when uh, the gaseous uh, takes place, mm -hmm. uh, gaseous exchange takes place. So if there is maybe accumulation of a mucus there or maybe there is um, an outburst or maybe a, a swelling, so the air that you breathe in, mm -hmm. then there is a, a certain amount of air when you inhale in. You're told the percentage when you inhale in is 21%, is it? Which mm -hmm. is within the atmosphere but when you exhale out it's 16 percent so basically it's about five percent you need mm -hmm. but in that we talk about the tide of volume which is approximately like a 500 ml so when you breathe in mm -hmm. then it should sustain however when you have a respiratory disease then your lungs will not hold up to that mm -hmm. and that's why now you find it is difficult and you have to breathe out mm -hmm. as soon as possible yes if i may challenge but does you. not do, does that mean you have absolute uh, covid 19 no. not necessarily because there's so many respiratory diseases you have bronchitis we have chronic or uh, obstructive pulmonary diseases we have uh, emphysema yeah. we have asthma so all those could be pre-existing uh, medical problems and now that is one of the factors that you're finding when you have some of those you are uh, predisposed or you have pre-existing medical uh, 
uh, illnesses, then even the coronavirus uh, the, or the COVID-19 when it's, now you contract it, mm -hmm. it's now the management again, it's, it's sort of now you are susceptible that it's going to depress you okay. other than the other person who is not now have any pre-existing medical condition. Okay. Yes. Because I, I also read a sentence, they yeah. said um, the elderly might have a problem yeah. count, holding their breath and counting for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they have COVID-19. Corona I wanted yeah. to say COVID-19 and Corona all at the same time. Yeah, okay. So COVID-19. And yeah. then a young person maybe who, sh who would test positive for mm -hmm. COVID-19 yeah. can actually be able to hold their breath. So there's no for It's a myth just... By the way, it's rumors. Okay? Yes, Hashtag but that does mean when you, the moment you have that, mm -hmm. that means you may need. But there's a problem. Yes, that means you need a medical attention. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need a medical attention. I like that you're yes. looking beyond COVID nineteen. Yes, like it because it's, it's not about because people are panicking because of this COVID. The COVID nineteen is not the big issue. We are mm -hmm. looking at other cases might you may be having, because that's the biggest problem we are having now. People uh, flash into hospitals. We have an influx in the hospitals. And remember, when you get into the hospital, it doesn't mean that uh, in a hospital you don't have other patients. That's true. So we're not you're like sort of like uh, we have disturbed. This patient have been discharged mm. by uh, the doctors. And you, when you get your um, this uh, sign of symptoms, you get to the hospital, you're going to find it empty. No, it is still at the capacity. So, uh, and that is what you're looking at. Yeah. Maybe my last question before uh -huh. we do the mass demonstration. Mm -hmm. COVID-19, like, is it possible to contract the virus, uh, live through it, get well, and then catch it again, like a cold? Well, um, 90, well, just to maybe the other question you had asked earlier on is if you get infected or you contract uh, coronavirus or the COVID-19, will you die? Mm -hmm. Not absolute. Not absolute. Many people have gotten infected and they have again through, uh, lived through it or they've been managed. Because what is happening currently is it is um, symptom managed medical care. So they manage the, these problems like the sore throat, the flu, the fevers, and all these signs of the headaches and the like. That is what is being managed. So once that, it gives your body now a position where because you have managed what is depressing the body, then it gives the body the mechanism now to improve on the immunity. So that's how you overcome. Oh. All right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same thing that you get flu. If you get flu, you don't always run to the hospital. Mm -hmm. But you have some even home remedies that you come up with and they actually work through. And the same myth you're finding <laughs> now people are rushing to the medical you know, um, pharmacies and trying to stock themselves with medic medication. Mm -hmm. And this is self-medicated medication, mm -hmm. remember. It is not a prescribed. Go, go. Exactly, which is the worst thing is happening in Kenya. Because the people who necessarily need, the patient who need this medication, like um, I've heard many people saying that they need antibiotics and the like. Now, the problem we'll have is because you're rushing to self-diagnose yourself, which is now misdiagnosis, at the end of the day, then we end up having kidney, uh, um, organ failures later. Because you're stunning a lot of My drags uh -huh. into your body that are not, necessary. That are not needed. So oh, what gosh. is happening to the body? You're depressing it because it's trying to fight. So at the end of the day, what do you get? Mm -hmm. That's why you're finding now problems will car, you know, incurring later. So yes, you're trying to think that you're fighting it, but what you're fighting it, you're oh. trying to fight an enemy you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So that's why the case we're coming up, please use what it is recommended. Uh, Last question. And this, by the way, is a very special question because just mm -hmm. the other day I overheard Okay, I know she's a young mom because I know her. She, so I overheard her talking about disinfecting her whole home. And I can imagine that she's afraid because she's a first-time mom and her mm -hmm. baby's very young. Mm -hmm. But is it true or is it a myth? One of the best strategies to prevent COVID-19 is to clean every doorknob in your home with disinfectants. This is why disinfectant is Isha, Isha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now <laughs> the point is what is a disinfectant? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it comes to the cleaning part of it, uh, we're looking at the surfaces because there's a transmission, we say this may be face to face, uh, the person to person, mm -hmm. the other is when you're touching surfaces. So the disinfectants perhaps you have is common like what you have in Kenya, the jig and the like. When you make that solution, then you can clean your house. Mm -hmm. And point where now if there are children, you know, likelihood where the children have been touching all over. But the question is, where did these kids come from? Mm -hmm. If they were just within your house or within your compound, did they have any interaction? So it's just perhaps the normal dirt they mm -hmm. have. 
all right? Not necessarily a coronavirus, mm -hmm. because it's not moving in the air, you know, hovering over. Mm -hmm. That's not what is happening. Mm -hmm. So just no more cleaning where that you're likely to be uh, having the tables, the doorknobs, you know, the, the toilet seats and the sinks. All those places, again, they need to be cleaned. The toys for kids, because they use toys, they need also to be, um, you know, cleaned Smart. as well or disinfectant. Mm -hmm. Because that's where they, they are likely to, f remember, they're going to be putting some of that, they're going to be putting them in their mouth. So that's the case where they need to be yeah. disinfected. I didn't even thought about all those things. Some total concert took a shule, a kuja, a kikila to come domo, a man there salimaki lam too, and that is a comta. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And that's okay. what is the point is you mm -hmm. found that if, if, even if yourself, like right now, you have interacted with people who have maybe come in a place where they have interaction with perhaps case of coronavirus. So even when you get home, the first thing you want to do is don't mix even your clothes with other dirty clothes mm -hmm. or with your, your, mm -hmm. your kids or your spouses or the people you're living with, because mm -hmm. now you as are likely maybe to be carrying. So say for example, even when you cough, which is recommended you cough mm. at the elbow, mm -hmm. remember this virus could even be here up to maybe six or so hours. So if you go and mix the clothes with the rest, then what are you doing? Wonderful. So it is better to put them aside mm. and to be cleaned separately, right? Okay. And that's then your hundred percent, that's even if you use a bleach, or in a disinfectant, then you have no cases that's going to be there. Because others will say, all right, I can go and throw my jacket there, my shirt there, and everything else. Then I get to the shower, and I, you know, you know, a bathtub full of Dettol, and I <laughs> soak myself in so I can get rid of it. <laughs> that is still another man. You know, you're going to be kidding yourself. Uh, uh, I'm saying they take a hot shower, <laughs> a very hot shower. <laughs> You kill them. You're going to scare yourself like a chicken. You know? It's Oi. just normal things that you have been Oi. doing. That is because the biggest problem is the panic. Uh -huh. All right? That is what it is. However, people just ought to follow the government uh, directives. Thank you. Thank you so this, much. This, this spirit, how it's out to be managed. So keep calm, guys. Mm. And on the final note, we're going yeah. to learn, on, uh, learn, on, learn how to put on a mask. Okay. So I was trying to be very, very clever and say, Okay, apparently manufacturer letting another side belly. So when you wear the, the calorie side out, yeah. this means that I'm sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, majorly most of people out there they wouldn't tell you how. I don't know how to use uh, to put on a mask um, because this is not what you're used to mm -hmm. in the public. But the healthcare provider this is a daily thing. This is part of your gear to work. So this face usually now uh, mm -hmm. when you're facing it this way and you cover your north like this mm -hmm. is the right way this and way. this is a surgical mask mm -hmm. and if you touch that mask there's a one point that has a firmness one mm -hmm. side has mm -hmm. firmness the other side that comes through your nose oh because to your nose bridge over here all right there's a firmness there Where? Uh -huh. this is the one that come to your mm -hmm. nose bridge uh -huh. Right there. Mm -hmm. So yours is going to come and cover the areas, but mm -hmm. mine is long band. So what I will do mm -hmm. is, if I have this, I tie it up. Mm. So 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 can you wash them? No, you <laughs> cannot. It's a, it's a one use. <laughs> the moment you use it, you have to dispose it. Then that side is covered on top. I'm covered on top mm -hmm. completely. Then there is a lower side, mm -hmm. which now, now again, I can pass it oh. on top. It's not like a shoelace, you just put everything at the back. Okay. No, because you need to remove it later. So if you just tie it all over, mm -hmm. so what's going to happen? You don't have an assistant. <laughs> well, uh, if you go that way, you can actually <laughs> cut yourself. So it's an issue to do with safety as well. So this goes above the ear. The first, the first band goes over the ears, as you see, and the other one comes behind, mm -hmm. then cut across. For yours, it's very easy. You just hook it under the ear. Behind mm -hmm. the ear, the other one behind the ear. Mm -hmm. And these are comfortable. You can walk, you can talk comfortably with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you're done with this, then you need to remove it and dispose it uh, safely. Mm -hmm. However, some people keep on moving up and down. You remove it, you return back, you remove yeah, it, it, you return back. It becomes swag. You put it over here, then when you think someone is coming that might have... <laughs> You see, put it back. Yes. Now, you see, that would be wrong uh -huh. because the moment you keep on doing that, uh, perhaps I can remove it. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment you keep on doing that, the problem would be what? Um, every time you keep on doing that, remember your hands are still touching all over, yeah? Wow. 
uh -huh. and it's the best problem you told uh, try to avoid touching your face uh -huh. because your hand could go on the table could go on any surface and come straight uh -huh. then it come and this is why it is important for us to use this apart mm -hmm. from other people who are using those dust masks that you have to keep on oh. using mm -hmm. this is the right one mm -hmm. because the other one is a little bit uh, suffocating you so every time you keep on adjusting it as oh. if people have put it only plastic, on the plastic throat, uh -huh. yeah and as they put it on the forehead it look like a lamp you know a headlamp <laughs> so this is would be the, 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 the right one to use uh -huh. yes and there are those again who are using gloves okay mm -hmm. if you happen to put on gloves this is another way please the moment you put on gloves whatever you have done a procedure whatever you have done then remove those gloves you remove them safely and dispose and they need to be discarded the right way why is that because say for example you have put on uh, gloves i go through and i've seen this to some of the guys and especially like uh, the the security officers out there mm -hmm. you come and search this bag you have searched the bag then you hand it over I then you go, then yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and, and you know ladies you have a lot of stuff in the, in the bag so then i go to the next bag we uh -huh. have not removed the oh gloves gosh. then i go to the same so if this person was already infected no, who there, is mungine. asymptomatic because i cannot tell oh they're not having any oh. symptoms so i'll bring it to you and you carry are you seeing the trend okay but no to see one baby well for check your bag no i'm not saying that <laughs> i'm not saying to 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 not to use the gloves the, the point is mm -hmm. i'm i'm telling to extend this information even to them who are using the gloves okay. because the moment you use them this may be even the banking area and the like uh -huh. because i can i've seen so many people putting on gloves all right they also to again remember because you can again keep on contaminating others okay. and that's why even the Ooh. medical practitioner when they come or uh -huh. the uh, the emergency medical service when they come over to you mm -hmm. they attend to you no one will ever attend to you without them. then they put on their gloves then they go to the next patient with the same pair they already ah. have removed and put on a fresh cross Thank contamination you. That almost sounds like cross pollination, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking <laughs> about COVID 19. Thank you so very much for staying with us. It has been Health on Monday. We have MCM coming up. Mike, it has been an honor. Thank you for enlightening us. You're most welcome. <laughs> Don't go away, guys. Yeah.